So welcome back, friends. This was uh, kind of uh, requested by several of you. I mentioned that I had some pretty interesting footage from uh, just an incredible uh, ride that we did over the weekend, a big 60-mile loop and some really gnarly, gnarly terrain. It's, uh, it, was, uh, one of the, it was one of the best, one of the funnest things I've, I've, I've done in recent memory uh, with a group of really good guys. So I have my friend um, uh, Jesse, who's kind of our, our group leader, definitely the strongest rider, and um, uh, my funny friend Ray, and uh, a new guy that I hadn't ridden with before. His name was uh, Troy. And so I'll just do a little commentary here as we're going along. But uh, it was a very extreme uh, uh, area. Uh, we were the first bikes through uh, for, for the winter. Uh, since the winter so there was a lot of blowdown and there was still quite a bit of snow uh, and a lot of uh, damaged slides in different areas of the trail and it's uh, it's pretty extreme I mean there's nothing out there there's no roads and um, you're on your own to get yourself out of trouble we were really really remote so this was a very slippery very scary and of course the video never shows uh, the extent of it a little tiny tiny little rock slide that we had to get the bikes across and none that if you were to go down over the other side Good luck getting your bike back because it would go down there a long ways, uh, be a serious problem. But we all got through it. And what was kind of fun is that uh, we all had to work together. Um, there were a lot of obstacles and there were a lot of trees and we had to cross over logs and snow and precipices and cliffs and rocks. And uh, it just made the whole thing you know, when you're doing it, it's it's tough, um, and you're tired and, and you're a little bit scared sometimes. It's one of those things is when you that when it's all over and you're back at camp the next day and you're talking about it, you know, it was just the most amazing thing. It's funny. We never remember the, the ones that uh, are easy or everything goes right. The ones, uh, the trips and the things that I guess make the most memories are the great adversities. So I just had uh, my cell phone on me. I wasn't planning on doing this video, but it was... Uh, um, I'll show you what I have here. So I tried to mount the phone to the bike, which didn't work, but this is really interesting. So we were coming up this narrow little trail with a big cliff on the right-hand side, and right there, ooh, if you don't stop, if you were to blast through there, you would fly off about a 300-foot sheer cliff. <laughs> you know? So never being on this trail uh, was, uh, well, you had to be kind of kind of careful. One of the most uh, memorable parts of the trip was here as uh, there was a vista. So we parked all of the bikes and I was really surprised as we went up the top, uh, we got to see uh, mountain goats. There was a mountain goat up there. And you know when you're riding up in the area where the mountain goats live uh, that uh, you're in some pretty rugged terrain. So uh, we'll go up there and take a look at that. Hemlock, vine maples, spruce. Coming out here on the cliff, you can see uh, some of the topography. Uh, this was, um, you know what, the second week or first week of July. Second week of July, I guess. And still at this elevation, I think we were at about just around about almost 6,000 feet um, is about where the snow level was. But as we walked over this uh, viewpoint right here, you can see right there, see the white speck? Uh, that's a mountain goat told you right there that was standing there. up there looking at us wondering, what are these guys doing up here? Really cool. They're unusual wow, to see mountain awesome. goats. Um, sometimes I forget they're in our own backyard. It's just you got to work pretty hard to get Look to them. At that. There you can see the 300 foot drop. Really gives you the willies when you think about, as uh, you know, right there behind Jesse. You, if you were to blast that corner right there, that you would uh, go right off the edge. And uh, it's there is some risk and there's some you know some hazards out there, but I think that that's what makes it. Well, I guess what makes it so appealing to me. Ray and I were talking about this, you know, with all of the obligations of work and family and everything. And sometimes, uh, you know, a guy starts feeling kind of domesticated, um, you know, that you kind of long for some some risk or some adventure in your life. And, and for me, this is, and, and the guys that I ride with, this is really a great thing that we can uh, kind of go out for a day or two and ride together, ride on this stuff and, and have these, these adventures so that are not too far from home um, and come home and feel a little bit recharged. So this was a gnarly one. So we crossed lots and lots of logs like this. And the problem with them is they're slippery and they face downhill. 
And if you don't hit them right, your bike will just toboggan right down there and uh, go down the canyon 50, 60 feet. And uh, then you have a serious problem. So Jesse, of course, is our strong, the strongest rider of our group. And he's a pretty experienced guy. And Ray and I, and we, we're uh, not quite up to his level. And we all have our, <laughs> our own methods of crossing of crossing logs so ray uh, decided to uh just jump off and and drag the bike over uh which worked out pretty good definitely the safe way to do it and I, that's the way i was going to do it too but jesse always pushes me a little bit so i thought well if jesse got over that that i could too but you know as soon as i got up to it uh oh well, the whole thing looks very different easy to talk about uh a uh, whole another thing when you're doing it so here's here's my uh somewhat failed attempt Again, in a perfect example, we all had to work together uh, on all of these obstacles. We cut so many logs out of the out of the road. We had a couple saws, and uh, we drug broke some up and drug other ones. And one of the most difficult things that we had to do were these uh, snow crossings. Now, we're, keep keep in mind that we were the first bikes through here, so everything that we were seeing, you know, we didn't, we never knew if we could make it through or not. And one of the, one of the things that was kind of concerning or what made it really exciting was we reached a point in the trail where we had to make a decision, um, uh, whether we were going to turn around and go back or try to push through on this trail and turn it into a loop. And we had, uh, kind of, a a time we cut off the time and then we went beyond that. So we were pretty much committed. We had to get through this trail uh, to get back uh, before dark. And so we just didn't know what was ahead of us. And this was another perfect example of uh, a situation we had to figure out how to get through and get these bikes through all four of us, especially the riders being, you know, having different skill levels. So it was kind of nice that Jesse would go first uh, and it, I think psychologically for us, if we could see him go through there, then, you know, it gave us a little bit of courage to uh, do it ourselves. But this was a really gnarly one because it was, um, the trail was kind of washed out on the switchback and it was very, very steep. And there was a big slushy snowbank there and we had to get across that snow. And if you slip and go down in there, of course you got problems. So we're going to see Jesse here, give it a shot uh, first. Nope, I'm wrong. Troy went first. Troy took the safe route. <laughs> I think we all had the ambition to go up there and do a wheelie and swing it around and ride through it, but that was not happening. It's just too steep and just too dangerous. It was very hot up there on the trail. It was a pretty pretty hot day and, well, not super hot for, not like Air Africa hot, but it was... Uh, with all that gear and all of the uh, as hard of work as it is ma muscling these bikes around that um you, you had to really take care of yourself and manage that and um, um jesse one of the guys jesse he ran out of water so fortunately we had uh, ray and i had some big water bladder bags on in our packs and we shared uh, we were able to share the water and and get through it here's jesse's attempt he got the closest to getting through there uh, to, it was uh, steep it would have been so amazing After watching this, it might make a little more sense why uh, uh, I wanted to put together that uh, rescue kit that I showed pulling Mrs. W's lawnmower out, because uh, if all it takes is one mistake uh, to lose a bike over the edge and you can't get it out without that. So we had that with us and we, we didn't end up having to use it, but I, I thought there was probably a pretty good chance of it. This was one of the worst ones right here and we didn't really know how we were going to get across it. It was so steep and so slippery. So we came up with the idea. Um, we kind of all worked together for about 10 minutes and we kicked in a little road uh, in that uh, it was very, very small and we had to repair it after each bike went by there, but we were able to carefully get across there without slipping down. And the worst thing was that the snow went way down there. Four stroke power. Ah. Yeah, come into Here's it. Troy's Keep attempt. Out, and the problem we had, I, I went first on it. It was actually a little bit easier for me. So the most important thing was having momentum. So uh, the guys were, if you didn't, 
you know, really suck it up and, and hit that thing kind of hard, you would dig a hole right there and you couldn't really get out of it. So that was kind of the hardest part. But uh, we did uh, eventually get all get through there and uh, Ooh, nice, unscathed. Nice. That's scarier than this one. Yeah. Here comes Ray, and that was not a small obstacle in front of it either. <laughs> you had to go up on the bank and really hit it, hit it hard, and get over that, and then yeah. we right in the mix with our little uh, impromptu Another ice road. Victory. Hope we don't have to go back that way. Oh, I know. We, there is a good chance we have to go back through all of this. Yeah. Pain. So we probably covered a. Uh, a Jesse's a really great guy. I, I really uh, enjoy riding with him. He runs a. Uh, um, he takes people out. He's a, he does some guiding and has his own business and uh, uh, takes folks out uh, dirt biking and has rental bikes. And it's a, it's a real blessing to have him as a friend. And he's on the fire department with us uh, and to have his experience. And he's a great leader and he uh, looks after everyone and just a, an all around great guy. Everyone that some of the best people that I've ever met um, are, are in the dirt biking community, motorcycle community. And uh, it's a, uh, I feel very blessed to be uh to have them in my lives. I think we made it, Ray. So this. So here was uh, when we finally started realizing that we were. Looks like we were probably going to make it. <laughs> we, we. This was about as high as it was going to get, and, and it eventually ended up getting a lot worse, which I didn't get any video in because we were uh, fighting for our lives to get up over the top. But we got everyone up over the top, and we um, thank thank goodness to the GPSs that we had. We were able to tie into a trail and get down the other side, but. Uh, we were uh, we just didn't know, and that's what made it so fun and, and such a such an adventure. But what a uh, what a wonderful day, and I can't wait to get back up there. I wish Jack could have been with us. Uh, he uh, first day riding uh, hurt his foot and uh, knocked his toenail off. He hit a rock real hard and uh, wasn't able to come with us. But I'll uh, in in a week or so when his foot heals up, we'll get him back out there and uh, and take the boys. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one.